Well, welcome everybody to our monthly poetry slam here at Studio Central. Oh, hello. I have two poems to share. This first one is called uh, Footprint. So here it goes. I see footprints leading to my house. I feel trapped here like a little mouse. I hear footsteps on the roof. I think it's a monster, but I have no proof. I go to the window and I see a face full of scales. I want to survive, but I think I will fail. I hear a scream, like some kind of banshee. Will the thing ever let me free? I grab a knife in the kitchen sink, then I pour a calming drink. I would run away if I could. I was trying to fight for I know I should. What is this thing that stalks my home? I hear it grunt and I hear it moan. All of a sudden it goes quiet again. I sense a calm fills my brain. Now I know that I won't crash and burn. I hope that the beast will never return. It's that one. Okay, this one's called uh, Tower. Okay, this one's called Tower. I locked him in this tower, imprisoned by love. It is so cruel, but it was gentle as a dove. Everything was so gentle, now it's a living hell. I had open wings until I fell. Heaven crumbled into the sea. I'm in this prison, when once I walked free. Beautiful bliss, bliss has turned into pain. And I feel like a, I feel a stab wound inside my brain. All I can see is darkness and clouds. And all of the future is covered in a shroud. The carcass of hope has washed up on the shore. I don't feel like fighting anymore. Thunder rose in the sky. Trees fall and tears fall and feelings die. It's hard to hold on to dear friends. All the good things always come to an end. Hi everybody. Uh, I have three poems to share today. The first one is called Anywhere. I get lost without you. The cartography is implicit, but somehow I'm feeling it. In your smile, in your eyes, I can see through any disguise. Like we've been walking towards each other all our lives. I'd go with you anywhere, as long as we take our time getting there. Time casts a long shadow. There is no end to the places we can go if we commit to protecting one another, to being friends and lovers. The seasons don't matter. The reasons not to trust scatter like a startled flock of birds. Sometimes it's hard to put into words how much you have changed my life, even when thoughts wander. Remembering the loneliness and strife, I could not be fonder of you. When I travel in my imagination, you are always there waiting for me with infinite patience. When I cannot find my way, you illuminate it like the break of day. Anywhere is a valid destination. I'm already feeling the anticipation of being close to you and sharing the view from the mountain we climb together. Wherever you want to go next, I'll be glad to go. I won't say no. Even if you want to stay right here, I'd be willing to stay for you here. The map is charted in your mind searching for the inner peace you wanted to find. Am I there with you? Do we travel together through time? Am I the one that feels like coming home? Am I the one that keeps you from feeling alone? I'd go anywhere for you because in your gaze is the truth of who I am. When I met you, I really began to understand what it means to have a destiny. Thank you. Uh, this next one is called The Zone. I'm in the zone, I'm ready to work. Don't interrupt me, don't be a jerk. It's time to do things my own way. It's time I finally had my say. I've been holding so much inside. I don't wanna alienate you and I have my pride. I promised I would hear your side. So you had something to stay and cast your net wide, hoping to find someone who cares and someone who tries to understand you and your reasons why. And I appreciate your story. Now it's time to work out mine. Finding your voice can be a rough journey, and I know I've stumbled a lot along the road, but I find that words are coming more clearly as I continue. Maybe I've come to find my venue and re to realize the value of self-expression, learning to be comfortable with intimate confession, beginning to choose communication over repression. I'm focused on what I need to say, my thoughts like prayers on rosary beads, repeating the truth and releasing my demons, in touch with my moods. I discover how I'm feeling. I'm in the zone and I'm here alone, wanting to understand myself and to make my presence known. So just let me be in my own company a while and discover my truth and my style. I don't need to follow anyone else to learn who I am and to express myself. I'm ready to take my shot and I'm giving it all I've got. 
to score a goal and to get you to comprehend my point of view, to reveal, reveal myself in the process by which I've become aware. I'm not timid now and I'm not scared. Hear my voice and I'll be there. Thank you. And the last one, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure you're all enjoying the weather. It's called Delayed Winter. Startled as a bunny, the season freezes but escapes the snow. The wind is pure and mild, pale as a geisha. The sky turns to face the ground. Delicate beginnings of snowflakes melt as they fall upon the earth. Holding back a secret, the cold is coming. For now, her touch is loving. A May-December romance is deceptively forming. The evening encroaches upon the daylight. More darkness is creeping into the late afternoon. A blackbird can still be found after all other birds have gone south. I taste the freshness of a snowflake on my tongue. The wind brushes my lips. As to breathe, I open my mouth. Swept along by hope that the stasis of the weather will last forever. As peaceful to my mind as watching deer grazing, a prolonged gift from Mother Nature. The tree limbs exposed and naked, shy and graceful, having shed their leaves and accepted their fateful role to encase the city while evergreens flaunt their abundance of needles. The pale moon guards the night and floats gently in the sky, illuminating the way forward even when you're standing still. The neighborhood cats are roaming, looking for some rodents to kill. It buoys my spirit and seduces my will. I wish this pause could last forever. There's nothing better than delayed winter. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, I, uh, I have a few of my own poems, and I have a few of Brittany Fox's. So I'll do mine first, and then I'll hold this up when I'm starting hers. It's called The Ways of Light, uh, my first one. On all my poems of the glory of God and do with love. Thank you. A city from a distance at night or during the day, majestic and sensational, grit and dust up close. The most planned design is the vagaries of existence. The light slams to a window, into a window frame. The supple edges to the iris made of clarity, opening a flower apart with time made of time. The brilliant vision out a window, the darkness of an inner room from outside, the darkness of light from outside. Las Vegas and Christmas trees, adults being, pon being pondered too, and children, where we all understand activity and peace, silhouettes and giants, cornfields and fireworks, hunger and chance and future deserts, skin and flesh glow, with, glow, glow red with flashlight. The surface of water is like glass, life from the outside lit from within, moving like muscles, hair and cr the corona of the sun, smoke and steam, the blue sky and stars, a small light next to a big one, love that sees past all comparison, the sun can burn the skin, mistakes can burn the skin, because we need to keep living. Light is needed for growth, yet it is not the same. How many light bulbs exist? How does the city shine with such purpose? How does nature see a waterfall? High rises thrill, cliffs astonish, as if light decides how we feel. Cars are puny except with a kind of romance, caught in the day with the cost of dirt, like clouds that either rain or dance, art with a purity that strives for life, caught in youth we dance in a candlelight, sweat drenches superficially with mirrors that conspire against us, less hair means more out of place, no one knows how they look, perspective runs rampant, intimacy sings of all powers, because we can see love like a tan, we push for the limits and they push us entrances, entrances from a distance. So that's the first one. This one's called a coincidence. Swallowing your pride means it never existed. Asking for help suddenly it seems like you never needed it. We have all the answers ourselves, but we look for love. The ones in our lives are a presentation of truth. We walk with a loved one and we reach out a little to hold hands. We leave footprints in the sand, 
we walk across the land, hoping for a wedding band, lasting for all eternity, we are put here to love and forgive. Burying our souls seems to get us nowhere. Grabbing at straws is painful. Everything's okay, then it's all wrong over and over again. Friends go in and out of our lives so we see that there's something more important. We walk so far away no one can see us. We disappear over the horizon. We become one with the world. Then we are alone and all we did was try and find our way. Suddenly it's wrong to cry and do things your it's suddenly it's wrong to try and do things your way. Then a lesson is learned about being responsible. You can't keep spilling the milk and, and the Rice Krispies simply because it wasn't everything you wanted. We make mistakes and then we s still exist. It must be who we are that's, that's what matters. Reading the Bible, you wonder why the world seems to reject love. It becomes very personal trying to tell a universal truth. So much meaning grows the whole forest se seems yours. Everywhere you look, you have a chance to live. No matter how small the chance that you truly exist, it's all that matters. Everyone looks to the night sky. Everyone dances in the sun. You have a simple truth to spread. You want everyone to have such freedom. The forests are shrinking. The deserts grow. Pollution sets in. The seas are rising. The more precious things become, the less there is. Please help me dance. Help me see the stars at night. Submission to being who you are becomes a pleading. Others will do the same. Your heart opens like your eyes to a huge expanse. The only limitation to asking for love is the words we speak. We need to lie sometimes and people need to honor deception. There are separations between us so we create separations. It's so easy to lie and hate and feel powerful. The truth grows like a mountain overnight and now Deep, deep, and now deceptionally looks to erosion. A division occurs and we all know where we stand, hoping our hearts aren't just made of flesh so we can hand it to, to whoever as it lives beyond rejection because someone is always there. Okay. This one's called Birth of an Idea. To be driven to live, to know the infinite, is a direction, inwards or outwards, not a size. You are not being who you are, you are not chasing who you are. It is to touch something you know you can't touch. That is, that is how we know ourselves. Weighing an, an, elect, an election while it, oh, weighing an electron while it moves. There is something you pass through, the power of words with meaning, like an investment in the future where the number three becomes betterment and time, and, and nine is fresh, and, and, and guy is a grotesque effigy. There is a snake biting its tail, not eating it. The fangs are, are brought into service. They touch upon ideas that many are deceived to identify in at the far end of the snake. Anointed fangs that are our testimony, where they are separated from their hate because ideas don't understand identity. You can you see the difference of, judge, of, of judgment from believing in who you are. You will never know how. Am I the one who saw the snake doesn't eat itself, that it bites itself? The hope lives even in the face of the computer age and my psychiatrist gives of, of, old, of an old typewriter, the conviction and almost an absolute in human hands um, against the life of love of an Im of Im 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 immeasurable power. How atoms link with, with quantum levels doesn't answer where the power came from. Endless ages of, of landmarks, a poem of no approval of such feeling for me. I wrote of vulnerability, but only later did I see. You can't touch one finger to your thumb Maybe at, at some level you can, because it's beyond comprehension, it can't die. You, you, grow, you grow numb to the, to the bombardment of ideas, and the need to care about others grows. 
we travel towards exploration and away from self um, affirmation. Our physical size is not the issue. Light is always perceived the same way, not, not, no matter how big the universe. Well, the day can become twilight, but to explore is about fear. This is not about fear. It is not about rejecting an, an eternal twilight. It is about the eternal nature of simply being. To truly travel is to truly meet someone on your way, on your journey. An endless line of ink, never satisfied, each poem like a baby of its own, of, of, your, of your own. Always searching but never expecting an ending. Small universes can deceive us into being special stones we cradle like jewels. Somewhere, when it grows, we share it. Even the question grows about all the universes in the hand, and it's possible we didn't relate a moment uh, or a stone so puny yet so vital, a religion of love and not the anti-hero who saves the world teaching nothing. I can't capture anyone with, a, with one string, but with volumes I can offer a better universe for the value of living, something greater than that me is invisible, where fingers, where fingers touch, so now, so I, so I know that electrons can touch, and and now all is the difference between touching and moving. I was kind of cut up. I didn't wear my glasses. Now I'm about to read. I'm about to read. This one's called Obsolescence by Brittany Fox. I'll decipher your matrix in anticipation of your love. I'll be there when push comes to shove. I'll decode the doubts that you speak thereof. I'll dance with your demons to develop your higher devotion. Like a dishonest damsel, wash me toy with your abscondent emotions. I'm your third person omniscient. I embody your obsolescence. I'll dangle myself in front of the devil to compete for your confidence. There is no state or condition I can't compliment. I'll flood your conscience and flush your fidelity. I know how good we'll be separately. In time, you'll be so much better without me. I'll derive a certain hunger from the depth of your adamant soul. Wear the harness for me, lose your self-control. Don't be surprised when I consume your whole life. Your life whole, I mean, <laughs> sorry. And this one's called uh, Nirvana by Brittany Fox again. I think of my experience here as a pile of rotating organisms on this planet. I think of my own ex expiry when it becomes the exact time for my extinction. My distinct estimated time of arrival is elsewhere where you simply fall out of your skin and suddenly exist amongst euphoric bliss, leaving behind only your ashes and currency. I haven't ran out of sand currently, but when I fly to the horizon and I fully unweave my fiber, I won't be sure if I'm headed to, even, to heaven either. Remember me in all my ambitious glory, even though my sorry soul is, is sullen and gory. While I'm soaking myself in oblivion with whomever mastermind the brilliance behind my story, I'll tell them that their sense of humor had me going on the hour. Curiosity isn't the only thing that cowers over me when it comes to nirvana. You never know when, I, when life planned <coughs> you the final foul to throw in your towel. When it comes the day you are to give up your power, I hope your soul isn't sinful and sour. This one's called uh, Kaleidoscope. We're in this place where angels and demons cry, and devils and the devil is on our side. We are where heaven and hell collide in this universal game of shame versus pride, where love is deprived, and there isn't a saint or sinner that gets out alive. Life is always stranger than you could ever contrive. All we have to do is abolish our own na naivety to thrive. Thankfully, determinism is the only key to survive. Here, not too many people let the angel on their shoulder drive. 
We're all trying to leave behind legendary archives. Timing is the only thing that is perfect, but it does not always abide. Karma has our hands tied, and death puts everything we have going for ourselves aside. Ambition is what derives from our own soul. It's too bad we often choose to emphasize greed over self-control. Separately, we scroll through our sanity and pull the wool over our eyes about the amount of humanity being lost among our kind. We live in a world where love is blind and clarity is so damn hard to find because the devil is so, is so quick to make a playground of our mind. We're galactic beings intricately intertwined with the same fabric. We're celestials made of mercury and magic. Thine are rising and falling like the Titanic, ranging from the innocent to the rock-hard satanic. We're progressing here on this planet, integrating through passed down quotes, graphics, and generational tactics. Together we're, li we're li literally at it, handing crafting maps of the future grand kaleidoscope. Well, that's just about a wrap for us today. It was good to have you all with us to join us. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Cassandra. Thank you, James and Brittany. Everybody, tune in next time. Same bad time, same bad channel.